I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. Good morning and welcome back to Bible Talks. My name is Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ here in Russellville, Kentucky. We come to you every Saturday morning here on WRUS, and that's 610 AM or 104.9 FM. But if you'd like to see a video version of this program, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel. Just look for our website, and you can go into the internet and you know do a Google search for Northside Church of Christ, Russellville. You'll find links to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and other resources that you can use in your study of God's Word. We invite you, though, to meet with us. Let's worship God together every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock as uh, we meet at the building. And if you're familiar with Russellville, you probably know where Kentucky Fried Chicken is. We're right next door, so uh, very easy to find. As always, Brother Nick Greenman is with me this morning. He preaches for the Christian Home Congregation in Morgantown. Good morning, Nick. How are you? Good morning, Chris. It's good to see you and good to be with you all. If you all are in the Butler County area, well, then come on out to 3628 Lovely Road at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings, 11 o'clock also, following right after that for worship and midweek Bible studies at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. And if you want to get in touch with me, my telephone number is 270-999-2600 if you want to get better directions or service times uh, to Christian Home Church of Christ. And again, you can find us on Facebook, just look up Christian Home Church of Christ, and there's going to be some uh, links to our live broadcast through Zoom. And so we'll welcome you to participate in all of those different facets so that we can uh, somehow get together and study the Word of God together. And you can send us messages through those resources, whether it's Messenger on Facebook or if you can email us at northsidechurchofchrist at hotmail.com. You might have questions or comments about this program or just general questions that we can answer. Uh, we'd be happy to put in a video format, but if it's something that we can sit down and study with you face-to-face, uh, -face, we'd love to meet with you. So please call on us and uh, email us, and we'd be happy to uh, uh, set up a study. Well, we are continuing our series for this year going through the books of the Bible. I know it may seem like a tedious task, but each week as we come together and as we have for many years, um, you know, when we look at the Bible in these 66 books, there's just so much information that covers a wide span of everything in our lives, our spiritual lives, and Deuteronomy is next on the list. And Deuteronomy is kind of one of those books that talks about it all. And uh, we're going to be looking at that this morning in the few moments that we have. It's a big book. Certainly, we can't cover every aspect of it. But out of these, I believe, 34 chapters, we find God, through Moses, giving his people the law once again, and for a very specific purpose. And what is that purpose, Nick? And what history, at what point in the history of the Israelites are we at? Yeah, so before we hit some of the highlights of Deuteronomy, just a little bit of uh, context building. Uh, for the book of Deuteronomy, you've got the Israelites. They've been wandering for 40 years in the wilderness. They've made their way up to the east side of the Jordan River, uh, where Moab and, and Ammon are. And they're, they're in, you know, camping out there, getting ready to cross the River Jordan mm -hmm. to go into the land of Canaan and to inherit their, their land. Well, Moses, because of the error at... Uh, that we read about in Numbers chapter 20, he's not allowed to go into the land of Canaan, but here right before they are able to cross, he's allowed to look into the land of Canaan. And before he departs altogether, he's wanting to leave a reminder to the people of the law that they had agreed to follow uh, when they made the covenant with God. And so Deuteronomy is the second giving of the law just before okay. Moses dies. And so you might think, well, what's new about this book versus the others? And of course, when we look at many of the aspects of the law, there are a lot of particulars here that are repeated. There's some things that maybe we weren't aware of, but the general gist of God giving a law to his people to establish them as his people, when they finally go into this land that he's been promising them for a generation now, um, Moses, this is his last words. And you know, I often like to think if I knew that I was going to be sharing 
last words with somebody before I departed this earth, I'd probably make them pretty significant if I could. Uh, oftentimes we leave what you might call a last will and testament. And granted, Deuteronomy is by divine authority of God. So these aren't just the personal words of Moses, but he's always taken the work of God very personally upon his shoulders and trying to you know, keep the people corralled. Uh, I like to give that example of sometimes the video that you see of a person trying to keep cats in order, you know, <laughs> it's almost an impossible task, but here is Moses trying to do that with God's people and lead them to the wilderness. And um, it's a series of speeches really by Moses throughout these many chapters. Um, it's almost like a lot of sermons, you know, said in one. And I brought up the fact that these are his last words. And one of my favorite comparisons to that is Jesus before he left this earth. And I'm talking after his death, actually, and when he was resurrected. If you think about the very last words that he shared with his disciples before he ascended to heaven and sat on the throne of the kingdom, he says in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. And then he says, go into all the world. Teach the gospel to every creature, make, you know, disciples of them, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. So Christ there is imparting his last words to them before he leaves this earth. What I find very fascinating and significant about that is how many people in the world today, even the religious world, disregard the last words of Jesus Christ. How many have said, oh, no, I don't need to be baptized, you know, oh, no, we don't baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are arguments that we've had with people for, for ages now. So when you get back to these 34 chapters of Moses' words to the people, he has some very poignant things to say to them and to remind them of what their forefathers had done, of the way that they had come out of Egypt, the expectations that were placed upon them. The same people who said, oh, yes, we'll follow God's will. We'll do your will. And God has made the same promises to them uh, as he is doing here. That if you keep my will, you follow me, you obey me, then I will bless you. You will be blessed like nobody's business. Mm. But if you don't, then I will curse you. And when you find all the troubles throughout the rest of Bible history, it's all because of that one thing. Because they did not remain faithful to God. They allowed themselves to be caught up in idolatry, just like they did there at Mount Sinai when the law was initially being given to them. And they never learned from their past mistakes. So this is a call to faithfulness. And this is to prepare them for the dangers that they are about to face in this unholy land. It's a land that God has said, I have given you. He, he speaks of that in a past tense kind of way. And all you got to do is go in and take it. But like the generation before them, they looked at the land, they feared things. They looked at the land and they went in, and they made deals with the nations that were there when they were to wipe them out because they were pagan worshipers, idol worshipers. Uh, they were, they committed all sorts of immoral sins in the sight of God. This was not just blessings on God's people. This was punishment for heathen ways. And I just wonder, what will be the punishment for people today? Well, I think we see all that in Deuteronomy and what God expects of us even today. What are some of your thoughts, Nick? Yeah, so you connected to Jesus Christ and some of the things he said. One of the coolest chapters in Deuteronomy is Deuteronomy 18, because that is a, an obvious pointing towards Jesus moment. Uh, <clears throat> we have to listen to the words of Christ, you know, Many different ways and many, many different times God spoke to the fathers. But in these last times, he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And we need to be listening to what Jesus has to say so that we can know how to avoid that judgment that you were just talking about. Because it's only through Jesus Christ that we can have our sins forgiven. And in Deuteronomy chapter 18, talking about the prophet that will come in like manner of Moses, Moses says that, and it will, and it shall be, in verse 19, that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. And so this prophet that's going to come is going to be speaking on behalf of God. And, and Moses even said, hey, when he comes, you better be listening to him because he's speaking the words of God. And, and so there's no denying you go to Acts chapter 3. 
you see uh, Peter, you know, definitely leaving no questions as to who is this prophet that Moses is talking about. It's talking about Jesus of Nazareth, that he is indeed the Christ and the one who speaks on behalf of God. Yeah. And everything that we find in the book of Deuteronomy, as we pointed out from the beginnings of our studies from Genesis on, always point toward Jesus Christ. You know, it's a pattern that is set in regard to the examples of faith that we have in the book of Hebrews and uh, the way that we should believe in God, do his will and to, uh, you know, respect him. One of my favorite chapters in Deuteronomy, and I think for a lot of people, too, because Deuteronomy 6 is often quoted especially when you talk about home, family, you talk about the, um, in particular, the way that we raise our children. And Deuteronomy chapter six deals with this when Moses is telling the people, you've got the generation to follow that you've got to be concerned about as well. This is a new generation because that first generation passed away in the wilderness because they were unfaithful to God. But he takes them back to their beginning and says, look, I want you to remember why we're doing these things here. And in Deuteronomy 6, and I'll just read a few of the verses here to kind of set the tone. He says, now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, and all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. And he goes on to tell them what aspect, what point in their life they should be, um, you know, teaching and, and encouraging their children. And, and what I love about this passage is he makes it a part of every aspect of their life. Look at verse five when, well, verse four, really hero Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words, which I command you today shall be in your heart. And one of the things that we're going to see throughout the course of, of Deuteronomy is all the things, if you know anything about Bible, Bible history, is you're going to see all the ways they messed up because their hearts were not given over to God fully. Uh, before I continue in, in Deuteronomy 6, um, you know, we were talking before the program, Nick, about Solomon. And of course, the kings and what was expected of them throughout history. And what were some of the observations that you make about Solomon in contrast to what we find in Deuteronomy? In particular, I think it was chapter 17. Yeah, so in Deuteronomy 17, you got this great chapter on the kings and what was expected of them. One of the things that was to write the law of God, they were supposed to write it themselves down so they would have a copy of it to, to be able to reference so they would know how to judge the people. But there were some interesting things inside the law that, um, well, this in chapter 17 specifically, where the kings were not supposed to gather for themselves gold. They were not supposed to collect horses. They were not to, you know, have multiple lives. And Solomon did all three of those. And, and so you, you got to wonder, did he not sit there and write the law like he was supposed to and not know what he wasn't supposed to be doing? And so what, what's interesting is we begin to see how this covenant that God has made with Israel, even at the highest echelons, is starting to fracture. And they're not doing the things they're supposed to be doing. Uh, Solomon was receiving 666 talents of gold a year. He had a thousand women, 700 wives, 300 concubines. He had some of the greatest stables ever built so that he could house all of his horses. God made it quite aware. Here in the book of Deuteronomy, it is the quintessential book in regards to giving them ample opportunity to realize, hey, if we do these things, bad things will happen. If we're obedient, good things, bad things, bad things are coming there. So, you know, Paul said in Romans chapter 11, verse 22, he says, behold, the goodness and the severity of God uh, to those who do good, good, but those who do wrong, then the severity of God, there's nothing different in the Old Testament, and New Testament in regards to that. If we're going to be disobedient, there's going to be judgment coming our way. If we're going to be obedient through Jesus Christ, then we know that we have that, that salvation and the restoration of our souls. And chapter 17, it's just a really interesting case study. Uh, you go through that, you know, line by line in regards to what was going to be expected of the kings. And Solomon 
Solomon, the wisest man, <laughs> and you know, second to Christ. He, he messed it all up. <laughs> every every bullet point you can find uh, that Solomon uh, totally uh, decided to crumble it up and just toss it in the trash. Yeah, with all of his wisdom and everything that God had blessed him with, uh, you know, if it could happen to him, it could certainly happen to us. And that's why we have to be especially on guard. I mean, who can say they have the wisdom of Solomon? And uh, we need to have the wisdom of Christ because Jesus, of course, I, I often like to say that... <laughs> Solomon may have been considered the wisest man on earth, but yet uh, that's second only to, to our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's our example to follow. But yet you look at these examples, and I'm going to be talking about some of this in our sermon series uh, tomorrow morning at Northside, uh, taking text from uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 10, about where Solomon's heart was and how his heart mm -hmm. turned because of the many women in his life and all these other aspects that we're talking about here and just how dangerous it can be for us today. Because again, they didn't listen to the warnings. I want to go back to Deuteronomy 6 for just a moment and continue in what Moses had talked about in regard to the importance of teaching their children. And this is in essence, the Lord God teaching his children. And now he's saying, teach your children as well to do the same things that you should be doing. And he says in verse, um, oh, verse seven, you shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Let me just ask you, Nick, at what, what point of the day does that cover? Every point of the day. Yeah, that's pretty much my, my entire day listed right here in one <laughs> verse. <laughs> so, you know, stop and reflect on that, folks, because this is how much attention that we should be giving to God and his word and obeying him. Mm -hmm. And uh, when a lot of people restrict their learning of God to, you know, a Sunday service or an occasional video or even this radio program, uh, you need to be teaching and practicing God's will daily. And what I love about the rest of this, we won't have time to get into all the passages, but verse 20 uh, is is just a it's a reminder and it's a it's a somber and humble reminder that if you're practicing the things that you should because of god people are going to take notice your children are going to take notice and in verse 20 he says when your son asks you in time to come saying what is the meaning of the testimonies the statutes the judgments which the lord our god has commanded you oh i don't know about you but the, when your children start talking that way uh, that it'll bring gr the greatest joy to your heart as a parent of knowing that my children are interested in spiritual things. They want to know why we do these things. They want to know why we quote unquote, go to church. They want to know why we sing and praise and, and give of our means. They want to know why we partake of the Lord's supper. A little boy comes up to me. I think it was Wednesday night actually. And asked me about taking the Lord's supper. And he's very young, uh, you know, too young to become a Christian at this point but he's heading in the right direction and uh, just as innocent as can be. And he's wondering why little kids don't take the Lord's supper. And uh, it's like, wow, uh, I wasn't expecting that question. So we had a little discussion about that and it's just like, wow, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, I, I have high hopes, you know, for his future and uh, he, he's got a family that's very supportive of him and raising him in the Lord. And I just really, I'm excited about what the future can be. But anyway, it reminds me of this passage. Why do we do the things that we do? And when we create that interest in them, all because we talk about it, we make it a part of our lives. And then we will tell them because this is what God has done for us. And of course, for them in Deuteronomy chapter six, they were able to go back and talk about being slaves by Pharaoh, being brought out of the land, and God doing all these things to preserve them as a people in verse 24. And then in verse 25, it says, then it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to observe all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. And the Lord has commanded us in the church today. Now, certainly, a lot of our laws have changed. The old law, as we read about here, was nailed upon the cross with Jesus' death. And um, all the things they did that we will be studying in the next few months to come, um, you're going to say, well, we don't have to do those things, do we? And when we get into the New Testament, you'll see, but well, we are to have the same attitude and faith 
and perseverance and determination to live according to the same principles so it can be righteousness for us. But we only have about a couple minutes left. Nick, any last thoughts you want to share before we wrap up our study this morning? Well, just one of the cool things, again, uh, with Deuteronomy as we close it up is to remind ourselves how it closes itself uh, with the, the farewell speech of, of Moses and the appointment of Joshua as the new leader. And, and so when we get into Joshua, uh, it's going to be really exciting to see uh, that parallel with Christ. There's, uh, it's an obvious uh, parallel, but sometimes we may not realize it because we see the name Joshua. Uh, Joshua is the Hebrew form uh, that some people might say Yeshua. Uh, but if you transliterate that into Greek, it's Yesu, which we make Jesus. So Joshua and Jesus is the exact same name, just different languages, just like Charles and Carlos are the exact same name, but one's English and one's Spanish. And what does Joshua do? Well, he leads the people into the promised land. And what does Jesus do? Well, he leads the people into the promised land, which is heaven itself. And so Joshua is appointed leader there in chapter 31. And Moses is going to give his farewell speech. He's going to go to Mount Pisgah. And, and then, of course, the Lord is going to take him. Uh, okay. Very powerful. Very powerful. But don't worry. Ever. It's not the last that we see of Moses. Because <laughs> even though God punished him you know for his for his failure um you know obviously moses was a repentant fellow and uh he was righteous in the sight of god and we'll see him again in the new testament when he appears with jesus on the mount of transfiguration and so i think we can be assured of moses salvation Amen. but in light of these things i want to leave you with this note here and this is really a little look at what our next week's lesson will be about as we get into joshua chapter one and one of the things that we want to hang on to and that we need to hang on to today is verse five or verse six, pardon me. Be strong and of good courage for to this people, you shall divide as inheritance, the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. God's going to keep his promises. And so he says to them, be strong, be very courageous. I'm going to keep my word. So you keep yours. So in this week, Keep your word to the Lord because he has certainly kept his word to us. And if there's something that we can do to help you, to encourage you, to help answer your questions about the Bible and to come to the Lord through what God has revealed in these scriptures that you may keep his commandments, give us a call, email us. We'd love to hear from you. Let's talk about these things and we pray that God will bless you in the week to come. We hope that you'll join us again next week for another episode of Bible Talks. Have a great week. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name.